The property market is cooling down. The rate of price growth is down. Mortgage approvals are down. Transactions are down. And it might sound weird, but as an investor, I actually find this really exciting. Because finally, after two years of market mania, at last, it's possible to negotiate a strong deal again. There are some simple but very effective actions that you can take to profit in this market. And I'll share them with you now, including a software tool that's ideal for giving you the upper hand in negotiations. The first thing to do is if you've had offers rejected in the past, follow up. If the property is still unsold and the vendor is reading a lot of scary headlines, your offer that offended them a few weeks ago might look a lot more attractive today. And even if the property is listed as being sold, follow up anyway. You should be doing this whatever the state of the market because around a third of deals where a sale is agreed go on to fall through later. But right now is the perfect time to build that habit if you don't do it already. There'll be chains falling apart all over the place as one buyer in the middle gets cold feet or suddenly can't justify the price. So there will be opportunities to get deals done on the rebound. Next, look for price changes on Rightmove. Rightmove will tell you the date on which a price was reduced, but by default, it won't tell you by how much or if there were previous changes. However, you can unlock this information using an extension for the Chrome browser. One that's free is called Property Tracker. When you're viewing an individual property on Rightmove, it adds a little icon next to the price and you can hover over it to see any changes. There's an alternative that I prefer, which is called Property Log. There is a usage limit after which it charges you a few pounds a month, but the benefit is it shows you the changes on the search results pages without you having to click into an individual listing. This information is powerful because of course, prices tend not to get reduced if there's loads of demand or if the vendor isn't that bothered about selling it quickly and is quite happy for it to just sit on the market. If a property was listed for months before having a price change, that could be an indication that there had been a sale agreed, but it later fell through which could be great news for you because the vendor might really need to sell to prevent their onward transaction falling through. So they may be minded to accept a lower offer. Important point here, an asking price that's lower than it was does not automatically mean you're getting a bargain. It could just mean that the property was hilariously overpriced and now it's only a little bit overpriced. You should always ignore the asking price and come to your own opinion of what a property is actually worth. If you don't know how to do that, a starting point is to go to sold house prices, put in the postcode, filter to a quarter of a mile, then look for similar properties in terms of size and type that have sold within the last year. There's a lot more to it than that, but it's a pretty good starting point. And you can leave a comment if you'd like us to make more videos about research like that. The point here is to use changes in the asking price to spot cases where the vendor may be open to a lower offer, not just to find a reduced price and then pay it. Okay, point three, prepare to negotiate. By prepare, I mean put yourself in a strong position because if your offer is not gonna be attractive in terms of price, then it needs to be appealing in terms of speed or certainty instead. So if you're buying with cash, then that's amazing. If you're not, then get a decision in principle from your mortgage broker, or at least know that you can get one within 24 hours of making an offer. Also line up your proof of funds in terms of bank statements and make sure you've identified which solicitor you'll use. These are all things that you can do after offering, but by telling the agent that you've already done them, it'll give them more confidence in you as a buyer. Then get out there, get viewing and start making offers. For the first half of 2022, there was basically no point doing that. Even getting a viewing was hard and you'd find yourself crammed in with a load of other people. And any offers of less than asking price weren't gonna get you anywhere. But now if you can establish yourself as a credible buyer, you can start flexing those negotiation muscles again. Of course, there's no point doing all this if you then run into trouble with getting a mortgage and the mortgage market is particularly tricky at the moment. So make sure you watch this video next where we tell you everything you need to know about buy-to-let mortgages.